Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to show you how to do the duplicate stitch on top of knitting. For today's tutorial, um, you're usually going to have a graph to follow when you're doing duplicate stitch, so today I'm using my Knit Nordic Tree Pillow Pattern. You'll also need some yarn. Today I'm using Vanna's Choice in black, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and stitch markers are highly recommended. Let's go ahead and get started. So I use the duplicate stitch in my Nordic tree pillow pattern, and this is a beautiful technique. Um, it's easy to do. It just takes a little bit of time. It looks great on knit fabric, and I specifically use the duplicate stitch because I initially started out by trying to carry my yarn, um, and when using white as the base color, it was very easy to see the black being carried through. So by using the duplicate stitch, you won't see any black yarn being carried through. You're just simply going over top of the stitches that already exist. So um, when you pull it apart, you won't see any black coming through. Um, and the same when you pull this area where the the trees are, um, it all gets hidden. So the back of it doesn't look so nice because you'll have a bunch of knots and a little bit of carries, but on the outside it looks beautiful. This is a great technique to use, especially when doing some detailed work like on this graph. So as you can see, here's my graph for my tree pillow. Um, and I kind of keep track by crossing out the trees I've already done, but you'll read the graph left to right. Um, the pillow is worked in the round, so I try to keep track of where I start and where I end, um, but you'll understand as you make it. So here I've used stitch markers to block out the very bottom stitch of each tree. So here I have five trees marked out. And you can see on my graph, um, the same trees are being used. So let's see, so these five trees right here, these two, and then these three trees up here are these, um, these stitch markers here. So you will have to do some counting. It can get a little bit tedious, um, but it's pretty simple once you get started and you have started your base with like one or two trees you can just kind of count across from those trees to find your other ones so using stitch markers to block out where your pattern should go um, is really really useful it makes it a lot easier to follow okay so before I show you exactly how to do the duplicate stitch I want to show you so where my stitch marker is you see how the knit stitch has these little V shapes. So each V has a left side and a right side. These two bars right here make up one stitch and that's equivalent to one square on your graph. Okay, so your V's kind of make rows right next to each other. It can sometimes get tricky to count how many stitches across you can get, but as you go, it will get easier to follow. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have a piece of black yarn. I just cut a long piece of yarn, and I do cut a new piece for every tree that I make. And I just slip it onto my tapestry needle, and then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to work the duplicate stitch. So where my stitch marker is, is that bottom part of the tree. So I'm going to insert my hook or my needle from back to front at the very base of that V stitch. So there is a little hole there. So just simply slide it through, leave a decent amount of yarn for your tail on the inside part of your piece. Um, and then I try to hold that in my left hand so I don't get it caught up with the rest of my stitches. So now that I've got my stitch in place, I'm just gonna take my stitch marker out. Okay, so now we can see we're gonna be making the trunk of the tree first and then we'll be making the branches. Okay, so here's my first stitch. You can see the V. I'm gonna slip my needle behind the stitch above it, behind both bars of the stitch above the one I'm duplicating. Pull that through, and as you can see, we've now made that right side of our first stitch. Then I'm gonna insert my needle back through the hole I initially came out of, so the very bottom of the stitch I'm duplicating, and then pull my yarn through to complete my stitch. And it's as easy as that. So you'll have both sides of your stitch being made right on top of a stitch that's already in your piece. 
So for the next stitch, I'm going right up through the bottom in between the two bars I just made. And we're gonna duplicate stitch the stitch above. So again, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to insert it in the stitch above going behind both bars. So from right to left and then pull it through to make the right side bar of my V and then push it back into the hole I initially came out of, pull it through to make the left hand side of the stitch, the left bar. And we're gonna repeat that all the way up until we've done 13 duplicate stitches and that's gonna make the trunk of our tree. Okay, so now I've made my 13 stitches. They are a little bit hard to see here just because I'm using black yarn. But now I'm gonna go ahead and start making the branches. I'm gonna start on the right-hand side and work my way down. Okay, so following the pattern, I'm going to be working in the second stitch from the top to the row to the right, <laughs> okay? Um, so I'm going to insert my hook at the base of the second stitch down on the right and then stick my needle behind the bars of the stitch above the stitch I'm duplicating pull it through to make my right hand bar and then stick it back down into the hole that I first drew it out of to make my left hand bar okay and then the next stitch is going to be one down and one over to the right so here's the one next to it, here's the one below, that's the one I wanna duplicate. So I'm gonna insert my needle at the base of that stitch. Again, draw it up, insert my needle behind both bars of the, row, of the stitch above it. Make the right side, stick it down through the hole again towards the back to make the left side. Okay, so that's my first branch made. Now I'm gonna go back over to the trunk of the tree and I'm gonna count down three stitches from that first side. And that's where my first stitch is going to be made. So here's the second branch. The first stitch is gonna have two stitches in between. Okay, so once you get the hang of it, if you're making this Nordic tree pillow pattern, um, once you know how the tree is made, it gets a little bit easier to follow. Okay, so my next stitch is gonna be one stitch over and one stitch down, or the third stitch down from the last stitch of the first branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my duplicate stitch again. And you'll notice that each branch increases the number of stitches by one as you go, and they're worked diagonally. So once you know how the tree is formed, it gets a little bit easier to count out your stitches. So again, working one stitch over and one stitch down, we're going to make our last stitch of this branch. Okay, so instead of going back over to the trunk, I'm actually gonna be working from the edge of the branch back up to the trunk. So I'm gonna count down four stitches down and one stitch over, and that's the stitch I'm gonna start with. And this branch will have four stitches in it. So again, working my duplicate stitch. 
and then this time going one stitch over, one stitch above, or you can count down three stitches from the stitch above in the previous branch. Whichever is easiest for you to keep track of. Just remember that each V counts as a square on the graph. Second stitch done, count down three. This is the stitch I'm going to duplicate. So insert my needle up from the back to the front at the base of the stitch, go behind the bars above that stitch, and then back down through the hole. And again, third stitch down from that previous branch, and we've reached the base of our trunk. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and work the left-hand side, and we're working diagonally down that first bottom branch. So I'm just gonna go right over to the next one. This one. And work my first duplicate stitch there. So this one will be in the same row as our last one that we just worked for that last branch on the right hand side. Then I'm going to go down one and over one. So over a stitch and down a stitch and that's the one I'm going to duplicate. Again working on the diagonal. And then again over one, down one, work a duplicate stitch. and then over one, down one to work our last duplicate stitch of this branch. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up to the next branch and this third stitch here, I'm gonna count up to the three and that third one is the one I'm going to duplicate. And then again, going over one, up one, so we're kind of doing the opposite that we did before, but always working on that diagonal. So over one, up one, and there's my third stitch. I hope I don't run out of yarn here. <laughs> I should have cut a longer uh, strand there. Okay, and then we're gonna work up, go up three stitches and duplicate that third stitch. This is the last branch on our left hand side and then over one down one to work our last duplicate stitch here I think I'm just gonna make it with this yarn and there we go okay so here is our tree okay so as you can see here's the back and here's what I do for each of my trees so I take the end I just was working on and I just weave it in I push it towards the center to like where the trunk stitches are and just kind of weave it back and forth in there a little bit and then I take the initial tail end thread it through my needle and weave it back and forth up the trunk until it gets close enough to the other tail that I can tie a knot okay so now I will tie a knot I try not to tie it too tight just because I want it to still be able to stretch a little bit when I put the pillow form in. And I usually do the knot three times. And then I trim off the tail ends, leaving a little bit of space in there. Okay, so now you can see on the right side, we've got another tree in place. It's looking good. Um, and now I can keep going where my stitch markers are and keep following the graph. Um, I can count off from the trees I've already made. It does help to mark the trees off as you go and to use stitch markers to mark them out onto your pillow. Um, but yeah, that's how you do the duplicate stitch in it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like it, go ahead and hit, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.